Hey all, Heretic here, and patch 26.2.2 just about to drop. It is May 19th. Should be dropping today at some point. I've got the patch notes. We're going to dive into everything Battlegrounds and see what kind of crazy things we're going to get to deal with. There's a lot of nerfs. There's a lot of buffs. Let's jump right into all of it. As always, there's some armor changes. We usually don't talk about these too much, but there's only a couple, so we can dive right in on them. Mash to win. Armor's reduced to 8. ETC band manager's armor was reduced to 10. And you might be going, well, why would they do that? It was just 20 a minute ago. Wait, we'll get there. Patches, the pirate's armor was reduced to 10 in higher rank lobbies. It's still 5 in the lower one. Now that we're done with the armor, because eh, let's get to the fun stuff. ETC band manager had a change. That change is pretty big. It's just going from 4 gold to 3 gold, the hero power. That doesn't sound like much, but that one gold certainly makes this a lot easier to deal with doing this most turns. If there's no good minions in the shop and you got three gold, why not slam the button to see if you can get something valuable? This is a big, big change. Definitely makes ETC a little easier to approach at that cost. We've got some minion updates, a lot of them, so let's take a look at these. First of all, upbeat front drake has been changed. Everything about it's the same, except it's attack. It went from a 2-1 to a 1-1. One, one. Definitely a big, big nerf there. The economy of getting a minion every three turns is huge. And I guess they felt two attack was just way too much. So we'll see if we see as many of these on people's boards now. It's gonna be a little harder to take. That one attack is rough. Low fire, stats wise, tier wise, everything's the same for except it's buff. Instead of giving plus two attack to minions with less attack than it, it now only gives plus one. I don't feel like this is a massive nerf. This was a very, very good card for tier two. I feel like this kind of brings it more in line with where it is. And it's still decent. If you've got a board full of things with lower attack than this, it's still a decent investment for a turn or two. Now you just can justify hanging around a little longer because it's going to take time to give that attack out more. Reef Riffer also got a little change. Reef Riffer went from a 1-3 to a 1-2, but the Spellcraft is exactly the same. So not a huge nerf, but definitely brings it down a, a hair. I don't really hate this change. I feel like this is still a very good card. And hey, look at this. Molten Rock, which has been around for, I believe, the duration of Elementals, just went from a 2-4 to a 3-4 with the same effect of getting one health every time you play an Elemental. I'm okay with this change. I feel like at Tier 2, the 2-4 was always a little lackluster. The 3-4 definitely makes me look at this and go, now that's an option I might take. The Flourishing Frostling got a buff. It's a small one, but it makes a big difference. In that early game, that is a big difference, getting one more health. Still has the same effect that for every elemental you've played, it gets plus one attack. But the fact that it's got a, one more health does make it stick around a little better. So definitely something worth looking at. Scourfin got hit with a nerf bat pretty well. They go from a 6-3 to a 3-3 with the same effect of Death Rattle give a minion in your hand, plus five, plus five. I feel like this kind of just brings it in line with other tier three minions. So it's not a crazy nerf, but if you didn't like this card, it is going to be something you probably want to play even less now. Radio Star couldn't dodge it either. They got hit with a bat a bit too. They go from a 3-1 to a 2-1, the same exact effect. For a tier three minion, the 2-1 stat line is definitely a little lackluster, but let's face it, if you're using this card, you're not using it for its stats. You're using it for that ability to steal whatever killed this. Hot for Quill got a nice buff. It stays essentially exactly the same, except now it's Tavern Tier 3 instead of Tavern Tier 4. So it's a 2-6 that when you play a spell on it, We'll get Venomous until the end of the turn. And the Banana Slamma. Uh, it got hit with a nerf bat, I want to say, but I'm also going to call it an ineffective nerf bat. I feel like making Banana Slamma the same stat line, the same ability, but just making it go to from tier three to tier four, while it does reduce the number in the pool and does make them a little harder to get, they're still just as effective. So you still can see boards full of crazy, insane statted beasts I feel like this nerf isn't hard enough. They're just wanting to move the needle a little bit. They don't want to just completely destroy it. But I feel like we are still going to be inundated with Banana Slammer Beast Boards. Upbeat Duo got hit with the nerf bat pretty hard. There's still definitely ways you can make the cards you want with this, but it is definitely not the same. So it goes from being a 4-2 battle cry, choose a minion at the end of every turn, get a planned copy of this, to 4-4, at the end of every two turns, get a plain copy of the minion to the left of this. So 
definitely still can do the job. It still can do exactly what you want. It's just not going to have the battle cry synergy giving you extra charges, especially if you have a brand. You know, when you've got you know, two of them, now they're giving you two copies. So then when you triple it, it would give whatever the new effect was, plus the previous effect. This definitely changes it a lot because of that ability to what's to the left of it. So I'm definitely interested to see how this changes up this card being used. I think it's still effective and neat. It's just now not crazy, insane combo as easily as it was before. Reanimating Rattler got hit with the nerf bat pretty well too, but at the same time, it just means now it's gonna stay on the board and it can slowly give your entire board reborn. So not necessarily a big bad change either. It goes from a 5-3 stat line, it loses its battle cry and it changes to a 4-3. At the end of your turn, give another friendly beast reborn. So you just leave it sitting there. This is an end of turn effect, so it's permanent and it just slowly gives away these buffs. I think this is a pretty good change for it. I mean, you definitely now can consider actually keeping it on the board. The nice thing is because it says another friendly minion, you never have to worry about it you know, reborning itself. So when you're tired of this minion, you can let it go and you don't feel like you're losing too much once the key minions you need have reborn. Peggy got a little bit of a nerf. It goes from a 6-5 to a 4-2, but the effect stays exactly the same. It's still the same tavern tier. So yes, they're not as effective when they're hitting you in the face, it's not really why you buy Peggy's. You're buying Peggy's so they buff your entire board. Maybe you have two separate Peggy's so they buff each other, but you're not generally too concerned with Peggy's attack line. So these stats just kind of brought this down into comparison with the rest of the power it gives your board. Dancing Barden Stormer got a buff. I'm still not sure it's enough, but we'll see. Goes from a 4-2 to a 3-2, and now it's Death Rattle gives plus three, plus two to elementals for the rest of the game. Not a bad change. Elementals were definitely a little lackluster and during this patch, so anything that might bring them up will help. Not sure if the plus one attack is going to be enough to get it there versus what it was before, but let's play some games and see what kind of difference it actually makes in the board. Sometimes one stat can make a huge difference. The Electric Synthesizer got a buff. Went from Tavern Tier 5, give your dragons plus four attack on a battle cry to now Tavern Tier 4, give your dragons plus three attack on a battle cry. I like that. That's a good change. Now it's lower tier. Now we'll see more of them. Now, having a big battle cry up at Tavern Tier 5 to give just four attack didn't feel crazy. I mean, obviously, if you're buffing with a brand and you know, Galagos and you're doing that kind of board, you're going to take no matter what tier this is at. But this is still a very good minion, and now it means there's more of them in the pool to use. General Dracosath has a bit of a change. They go from Tavern Tier 4 to Tavern Tier 5. They're still exact same stats, exact same effect. Only difference is there won't be as many of them in the pool. Underhanded Dealer got a change. Underhanded Dealer went from Tavern Tier 4, 2, 2 to a Tavern Tier 5, 4, 4. Initial stats don't really matter. You're not buying this card for those stats. It's what they turn into to a couple turns. The fact that they're coming a whole tier later, though, means there's a lot less of them. And when they arrive, they're going to be competing for spaces on your board with other much more impactful cards. So we're going to have to see how the changes, if this is still a good thing. Obviously, if you've gone you know, near infinite and you have tons of gold, Underhanded Dealer is amazing, but maybe now you're less likely to just pick it up early because it's at Tavern Tier 4, you don't have any real synergy, you might not want this on your board, now that's a 5. Mama Bear got a little bit of a nerf, not a huge change, but it goes from a 5-5 five, five to a 4-4, four, four. and now whenever you summon a beast, it gives plus 4, plus 4 instead of plus 5, plus 5. Once again, not a huge change, but just trying to chip away at some of the advantages that beasts have on stats, just to bring them in line with everybody else. Record Smuggler got a little bit of a nerf, goes from a 7-6 to a 5-4, still has the same tavern tier, still has the same effect, and let's face it, we're not really buying this minion for its stats, so not sure if this nerf is really gonna matter that much. It's a little bit of a stat hit, and maybe they've played out a few couple test games, they said this will make the difference, but honestly, I think people are just playing this for the economy, so I think we're still going to see a lot of it. Gusty Trumpeter. Exact same stats, exact same ability, except for now when you sell, instead of being when you sell six elementals, get a random elemental. Now you sell five to get a random elemental. Now I know when your boards go nutty and you have tons of gold, this card can make a ton of minions for you. This card's a little lackluster unless you hit nuts. This is a kind of card that when you're already winning, you win more. I don't really like cards like that, that don't give you a win condition they just make when you're already near infinite or have tons of money and get more value. So you win easier. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the Trumpeter. 
maybe this change, putting it down from six to five will be it, but I doubt it. Caligos got nerfed. Caligos had a brilliant moment in the sun and they decided to change it, but I don't think this change is really going to affect Caligos that much. You still want Caligos. You don't really care about his initial stats again. It's about what he does. And after you trigger a battle cry, give you dragons plus one, plus one. Doesn't really matter if he's a 210 or a 412 because the way you win with him is three turns later when your dragons all have plus 30, plus 30 or more, depending if you have a brand. So I'm not sure about this change, but we'll see. Now, Nadina the Red got a big nerf, and at the same time, the gold version of them actually got a buff because they go from a 7-4 to an 8-4, and now they give three friendly minions Divine Shield when they die. That is obviously a nerf, but there's never really been much of a reason to golden Nadina the Red. Well, now they give six dragons Divine Shield. Well, if you've got a Nadina and six dragons on the board, Math works out pretty well. So Nadina the Red, you actually have a reason to gold. I mean, nothing you're really cheering about if you were a huge dragon fan. It's a nerf, but it still feels at least, well, more practical now. This is, there's a reason to actually triple. Rock Rock has been buffed. There's no doubt about it. They increased what it does 100%. And maybe now we'll actually see more of them. I did play with this card a couple times. It was always extremely lackluster. We'll see now what it does, but it has the same stats, but the effect has been changed. After you play an elemental, give your other minions plus two attack swaps to health next turn. So as you're cycling elementals, you get to buff your whole board. Plus two is a hell of a lot better for a tier six minion than plus one. And Zap Slywick, talk about a card that's been in there forever that hasn't got changed. Well, Zap, they've decided seven tens not enough, went to an eight sixteen. Uh, I don't know if this is enough. It's an interesting counter card that does work sometimes, but now that you can buff things like Titus and all that, I'm not sure about even this buff mattering, but let's get some games in and see. Maybe this will make this one of the best cards. And finally, a couple minion pool changes. Monstrous Macaw has finally returned to the minion pool. So if you thought beasts were strong before, now let's see what the ability to trigger death rattles in combat does for us. Sindurai Straight Shot is now available in all lobbies, not just undead lobbies, so you're going to see a lot more of them, which makes sense because they're a good counter to Manted Queens, they're a good counter to Beast Boards, so I, I'm okay with them being in every pool, and it's just a fun Divine Shield thing that pulls Taunt off things if someone's doing some shenanigans with giant Taunt Elemental in the back, well, the rest of their board's kind of weak because now you pull Taunt off that thing, at least you can go kill everything else and ignore that giant monster in the back for a little while. So what do you think? Are you happy with these changes? Do you feel like they're enough? I feel like some of these changes are surprising and very powerful. Others are kind of, you know, not really inspiring and feel like they're kind of half measures. But they're trying to hedge their bets and not go too over the top and nerf them into the dirt so they're unplayable. But at the same time, they're nudging them down to where they're a little less stronger than they were, you know, a couple hours ago. I'm pretty happy with the changes overall. Let's wait and see what they do. And then we'll address it all then next week when Max and Quillbor come out because it's a whole new ball game then. Tell me what you think. I want to know. I'm excited. Let's hear it. Thanks for watching all. I hope you had a good time. Catch you later. Bye.